I, I don't know. I don't know. All right. Um, all right, everybody. Welcome to the uh, budget. Um, Call these budget work sessions. It's, work it's session. a budget work session. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we're going to be hearing uh, tonight from um, the uh, Marine Education Center, Clerk Treasurer, Department of Public Works, and the Village Manager. Uh, I um, uh, would like to get a motion to open the meeting. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Meeting so open. Uh, let's start with the. Um, Marine Education Center. We have uh, a naturalist, Kyle Troy, uh, on uh, on hold, on uh, the line here. Maybe you can start us off. Um, okay. So, hi everyone. Um, this is new to me. So, <laughs> I guess um, I I don't know how to really start off. If you guys want to ask me questions about what I did. Okay. Well, let, let, let's let's take a look at what we have here. I think it would be helpful if you went through what are the budget increases that you're asking for of substance. Okay. Um, the budget. Uh, give me a second. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Marine Education Center is 7146. We're going to start off with salaries, which is a 0.1 code. Um, pretty much we went from 56257 to 56804. Um, slight change. The next slide item is the part time staff. Uh, those amounts remain flat, other than we're increasing. The part time assistant naturalist from 10,000 to 12,000. The overtime line is being increased from 1,500 to 3,000. Can we discuss what the overtime increase is for? Um, yes. So the overtime increase. So this year, um, my programs have uh, tripled. Um, so I'll be working a lot of weekends where last year, I kind of, um, with they decreased the overtime because obviously COVID, um, it initially was 3000. They decreased it. And then now with all the programs coming back, I will be um, working a lot of seven days a week and I'll be going over my comp time, which I was compensating for with the 1500. So I had a lot of comp time, um, but the 3000 will help with the extra programming. So now in point two codes, the 7146220, which is Marine Education Center's office equipment, uh, that number is staying flat from 3500 to 3500. Um, account 7146403, print and stationary, uh, went from, we, we went from zero basically to $1,000. Yeah, so that's a big increase if um, I'll just, obviously didn't have printing and stationary years past. Um, this, I just got a computer, a uh, printer in the Marine Center. So I'll also am getting new A-frame signs. Um, this will help with signage and flyers for different programs and also uh, the printing equipment that I have for the Marine Center. All right. Fuel oil and lubricants, it went, went uh, we added a budget of $960 this year. Last year was zero. Yes. So that's um, for the village car that I just um, received. I do a lot of um, travel for programs as well as I go diving. So this is for tolls, gas, um, and other expenses that have come up. Supplies? Oh, I'm sorry. 
So you have a village car because you are traveling to different schools. And I mean, you're, tr you're doing a lot of programs off site, correct? Yes. Yep. So you just have a car. I mean, you have a village car and do you take it home or is it one of the ones that you like the fleet cars? It just stays at the Marine Center. Yeah. Unless I'm using it for work, obviously. <laughs> so. And you had like, so you have, so your part time people are summer people for the most part, right? Yeah, um, they start next month and they will, they end, yeah, in August. Right. Including a high school student usually, right? I have um, the interns uh, yeah. and those are free. Those, I have seven this year. Oh, right. I, um, because all the, the uh, elementary school classes are doing field trips. So I took on seven. Thanks. Yep. Supplies, supplies went up. You can explain that, why? Uh, yes, supplies um, was very under budgeted in the past 900. So this includes um, all my the fish that I need to buy for to feed the fish, um, mostly squid. This is also um, replacement filters, um, you know, cleaning supplies. So this is also now we're open 12 months out of the year. So um, this is really mostly um, attributed to fish to feed the fish so you don't have to close down now no. thanks open year round yeah mm -hmm. we don't close down anymore contract services we went from eleven thousand three hundred to fourteen thousand seven hundred majority of costs is attributed to house of fins for the services they provide uh, and I could explain that the increase, um, we had to add UV filters last year. Um, these tanks are now about seven, eight years old. So we'll have to replace um, the tops this year uh, and also a lot of the pumps. So this is why we increased House of Fins as well as to, they, it was under budgeted for the extra months. So we had to add in extra months of maintenance. All right, but we're 12 months now. Yeah. What, you know, when we have this conversation, I mean, Kyle has got one of the departments that actually brings in money. <laughs> and we never talk about that when we're talking about the expenses. And I think we should say that. It does. Yeah. She brings in a lot of money. We don't do the programs for free. No. Like what would you charge Kyle for a birthday party when you do a birthday party? Um, that I might increase, but right now it's 300. Uh-huh, okay. And then like a school group. So one of the schools, like the, the camps. So if I do a six week camp, that's 5,000. Um, and then everything's dependent. A private program's 150 for an hour. Right. So what, do, we have a figure, uh, uh, do we have a figure on what uh, the income is uh, for the estimated to be for the year? Um, for this year, I put it, it's, uh, last year was, I think they had it down for a thousand. I, I went over pretty significantly, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. And this year with all the schools coming down up to probably 20 to 30,000 is my guess. Okay. Yeah. You can look it up. We don't have that. We don't, we didn't have I that. Mean, that, yeah. defi that definitely offsets some of the, you know, the extra expense in keeping the Marine Center open year round. That's mm -hmm. what I'm I mean, not that all of our rec programs are supposed to make money, but on the other hand, they do make some money. And I do do free programs as well to the public. So I, I don't charge everything. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, for this, Kyle, for this year, you brought in 9,400 uh, for, for this fiscal year so far. Okay. And the, the, the schools are gonna go towards that fiscal number as well for this next yep. coming month, I think, right, Laura? Yep. The schools mm -hmm. at the end, end of May. Yeah, we finish at the end of May, Kyle. So I'll yes. yeah, the schools that come in May that, that will go towards this fiscal year. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And we're budgeting in revenues 10,400 in her department. Thanks. Yeah. She'll, she'll exceed that. All right. No issues there. Um, it's a Kyle, very pleasant part of the budget. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I try. Anything else? I'm good. 
All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you. Thanks, guys. See you later. All right. See ya. Bye bye. Bye. All right. Uh, next is the uh, clerk treasurer, Mr. Fusco. Yes. <clears throat> Page 70, right? Everybody see that? I can see it. Go to the slideshow. Uh, slideshow. And from the beginning, all the way to the left. Yeah. Thank you, Jerry. Oh, you're welcome. So I'm going to review the Clerk Treasurer's budget right now. We prepared a small presentation for everybody to review. The Clerk Treasurer's Office does the Treasury, uh, Tax Receiver, Accounts Payable, Clerk, Registrar. Records Management and Management Information Systems. Uh, the responsibilities is for all the monies received, dispersed. We provide general support through all the departments. We do test of cash receipts controls throughout the departments as well. And we try to tighten up on controls in various departments throughout the village. Currently, we're operating with eight FTEs and two part-timers. In comparison to our fellow communities, we're definitely in line with everybody else. Uh, we're actually more efficient than the town of Rye and the village of Portchester, whereas they have nine FTEs and three part-timers, respectively nine FTEs in Portchester with two part-timers, to give you an idea how we're operating with our peers. You know, the town of Rye and town of Marinick have much uh, smaller populations and overall budgets. So we're dealing with a lot more uh, residents, a lot more uh, money. Uh, we money. We do a lot more than they do. The key I love these here. pictures. Uh, this is a uh, Cliff's handiwork. He did a really great job. <laughs> really good. I see Cliff on the bottom on the bottom of the screen behind the computer screen. I see him there. Yes, the beard and all. <laughs> Although that uh, picture of the account doesn't really depict me. Well, I don't know. More Maybe. hair. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, right? More hair. So the key functions are the treasury, clerk, tax receiver, records management, accounts payable, register, and management information systems. Uh, along with this is also we provide support to all the other departments in whatever aspects they need. The treasury function, uh, Laura, do you want to go through the treasury? Yeah, mute myself. Um, sure. So, um, sorry, just fixing my thing. Um, right now, so the Treasury Department, we collect the payments mostly. Obviously, the biggest one is for the taxes, but we also um, process all the parking passes. Um, any anybody that comes in for licenses and permits, we help out for you know that as well. Um, for as far as taxes, we take them in by mail, by lockbox. We have the option for credit card. And of course we have our online tax payments. Um, all other departments, not all other, but the recreation department, the court and um, like DPW and the building department, they take their own payments in, but they do forward down their deposits and we reconcile all their deposits. Um, before they're posted in, our bookkeeper does it. Um, what else? Uh, um, we obviously do all, we handle all the audit, we handle all the um, cash functions. Uh, what am I missing, Augie? And it pretty much sums it up. Thank you, Laura. Uh, you're welcome. And obviously the budget, <laughs> we, help, we help with that, so. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so we also maintain the village website and we're public information officers. We provide, and we're the central hub of the village. People call first to the clerk treasurer's office for information, and we disperse the phone calls to various different departments in the village. Um, we maintain the village's FOIL program. We hold general code, we send all code changes, vehicle and traffic and changes to general code twice a year, uh, daily support to all departments, 
Uh, receptionist for Village Hall at 123 Marin. <coughs> Augie, on the maintaining of the maintenance of the code, when we when laws are passed, is the code online updated or not, or when does that get updated? The laws are passed; they're sent to the state. Feel free to jump anytime, Sally. Okay. They're sent to the state. Uh, when we get them back, we send them to General Code to update twice a year in our code book. Dan, the online version of the code is updated quite regularly, and you would have to go to a special part of the code and click on updated laws. And once you click on that, you'll see all the laws that have been updated but are not part of the code yet because they only add them to the actual code twice a year in January and June. Okay, thank you. So our department pretty much provides support to 18,929 residents in the, within the village. We've implemented more online services for people to pay online uh, through the use of rec desks. Some of the statistics that we listed there, we have 30 phone calls per day, uh, 60 per day during the month of June and December, 50% uh, are tax related, 35% are parking related, 10% are administrative, 5% uh, or other, including the mayor's office, which people call up and Sally is secretary to the mayor. Uh, we were servicing an average of 25 residents at the counter per day. Uh, and the February railroad permits and the March we had to hang tags, June and July, December and January taxes. The average climbs to approximately 60 residents per day. Treasury. Laura went over through this before, but just to go over it really quick. Uh, we maintain the general ledger. We prepare monthly and quarterly financial analysis and unaudited financial statements. Uh, we manage the audit, the financial statements. We do an annual audit every year, which we work with the auditors and provide whatever information they need. Uh, we assist the village manager in the budget process and work with the manager and all the department heads. Uh, key features are cash receipts, bank reconciliations, cash flow analysis, debt service, and municipal financing, investments in village funds, and issuance of long term and short term debt, and New York State Navigation Law Enforcement Aid submissions, which we apply for aid for our uh, Marine Unit Bay Constables. We have to be New York State compliant. Um, we have to follow the annual property tax compliance reporting, and we have to submit a constitutional tax limit. After our auditors are finished, we have to complete a New York State AUD for New York State controller to audit us as well. Um, our federal compliance involves preparing 1099s and 1096s. That's most of the miscellaneous vendors and payroll. The tax receiver collects taxes for 5,294 parcels. Uh, village mailing tax bills during the last week in May and accepts payments until the second week in March. Uh, we prepare tax warrant collections, uh, small claims and tax search refunds. Lean sales is done after, in, during the month of uh, March. Uh, the village has a lean sale on the second Wednesday in March. Transfer tax roll from the town assessors is a process where we collect both uh, rolls from both towns and import it into the village's tax model, tax program, so we could actually extend the roll and create tax bills. Uh, we record special assessments, water rears, and sewer use charges. Tax receiver continues. Some statistics here for you. Uh, as you can see, from 2014 to 2021, the total online tax payment has significantly increased. Sounds payable statistics. Um, on average, we're processing about 4,000 bills per year. Uh, lately, right now, 2022 to date is we're in the middle of the year. But we're expected to hit that number as well.
Clark, Sally, you want to walk us through this? Sure, Rogi, thanks. So part of the clerk's responsibilities are permits, and one of those are alarm permits, and those are sent out every year in July for an August payment. And these are the number of alarm permits that we have collected for in the last six years. Next slide. It's just on the back side, just as a matter of curiosity, do you know why the trend is down as opposed to up? I don't, Dan. Maybe more people are staying home, so they're not setting their alarms as much, or they don't have alarms because they're working from home. That's the only thing I could possibly attribute it to. Good. Good it's going down. These are false alarms, right? No, these are the number of permits. alarm permits issued. Oh, oh, right. oh, I, I think, think we have them. Okay, next slide, Oki, please. Mm -hmm. These are parking permits sold, and you'll see it last year that we don't have as many parking permits anymore. We went to just GP. So that's why the numbers are, are a little different, but the totals are the same. Well, they're a little less for this fiscal year than they were for last fiscal year, but we're still selling them. So just, I'll hold up on this slide. Because I didn't includes, know. Oh, I'm sorry, Nora. Go ahead. That includes railroad permits, right? Yeah, GPs are 290. The railroad, the resident railroad, 429. Non-resident are 70. And then the residential, those are the hang tags for $10 to park in the streets around the train train station. Right. And well, I guess too. It was. I'm sorry, Jerry. Less last year because people weren't going into the city. Much, yeah. But are the numbers are the numbers on the total skewed because we created the purple in the green zones? Because look at 17, 18, and 19, or, or 18, 19, 20, I should say. Mm -hmm. We're in the uh, we're in the, the 800, 750, 800 range. For which permits? The total. That's look total, the total. 700. And now we have 1,100. Mm -hmm. That's because we added the residential. We didn't we have this the residential. Before. Oh, so the, the residential is like where I live. That's new. I thought that was long standing. No. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, that's oh, that's new. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. <laughs> you brought it. No. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I can't get a permit. Sally said because I don't live in a house. That's what she said. That's correct. Like Your apartment has too many. Yeah, has too many yeah. units. And then this is the revenue generated. So those were the numbers of permits. This is revenue generated for the last five years. And our parking permits. This is my favorite slide, Cliff, thank you. Um, in 2019, we instituted a hotel tax revenue for the two motels that we have in the village. So they pay us quarterly, so this is the revenue. And Fiscal year 2022, we have just received, I guess, three quarters, Augie, so far. We'll get one more quarter in. I think so. That's correct. Foil, my favorite subject. Uh, you'll see the numbers, where they are and where they're going. And uh, we're on to probably exceed the 823 number from last fiscal year. Yeah, because this will go through the end of June. Sally, I got to tell you, I'm distracted by the pretty pictures. I'm sorry about that, but I'm trying. It's quite all right. It's quite all okay. right. So we also other licenses, dog licenses. Um, those have gone down too. Don't know why. Uh, I know people were trying to buy dogs during the pandemic. Maybe they couldn't get dogs. I don't know. Um, peddler's license. We just do a few peddler's licenses. We have a lot of people call and ask if they we would allow food trucks. But the way our code is written, unfortunately, it's not conducive for food trucks because you have to move every 10 minutes and you could never stop on Boston Post Road or Marinick Avenue. I think it's the moving every 10 minutes that's a deterrent more than anything. So um, our peddlers, we have a few ice cream men and we have one man that sells pashminas. Mm -hmm. Dance and cabaret, those are the beach clubs, have those licenses, and a few restaurants, not very many, uh, because you have to have live music to get a dance and cabaret license. Liquor licenses, we no longer receive them. Uh, they go right to the state. 
and games of chance. Those are bingos and those sorts of things that we have. They're mostly schools and the fire department. What they have to get a license to do their big bucks and their um, and the fireman's carnival. So there's just a few of the games of chance licenses. So on the food trucks, I've seen food trucks stopped on the Boston Post Road and elsewhere in the village. Uh, on non, you know, not on events. Do they get licenses for that, or are they? No, no. You should call the police if you see it, Dan. Not allowed. No food truck has a license with us. We just have a few ice cream men, and then we have one, the one Pashmina man. Uh, we do allow a food truck in the harbor, but that's different. That's done by RFP, and I believe we're going to do that for an ice cream truck as well this summer. But that's just one truck, and that's done by RFP. And then it's been done for events correct those are different and yeah. jerry's office actually issues those if it's like if during the fireworks if we want to allow someone jerry's office will issue those for the concerts or some right like, with a special event correct yep and, and how much do we charge for those jerry oh i don't recall uh, we'd have to look it up the yearly licenses for non-residents for peddlers is 300 dollars a year and for residents, it's 250 or 225, I believe. For yearly, did we create a, a Sally, do you recall an act? Did we create a, 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 a one time? Uh, think. we have, we've done that a couple of times, like during the, the fireworks, we did yeah. that. I know for our peddler that comes to sell balloons and things, he takes all the corners, Daryl, um, he's been doing it for years and we charge him $300 a corner for that yep. one day. Wow. Um, yes. Yeah. And um, I don't remember what we did for the other one. We probably did the same thing, Jerry, probably, you know, but it I think he was, was a, a resident. I think if it's, he was a resident. So it was 225, but just for the one day. Yeah, I'll ask Courtney now. As a matter, just as a matter of curiosity on peddlers, do other communities allow pet, you know, food trucks in, um, you know, by permit? Dan, um, I've um, I've I've seen them around, like driving around. I've seen them in different communities. Um, I don't know how they handle it. I'd be happy to find out because I know yeah. we have, we get calls from food trucks all the time, and you know, asking, well, can we do it like once a week in the harbor during the summer? Can we have a food truck night? once a week or once a month, or I'm happy to find out what other municipalities do. I think it, it, it might, it's a potential source of revenue and a service to residents if we can find something is meaningful and doesn't overly compete with uh, the restaurants uh, that, you know, on the avenue, et cetera. Right. So maybe we should look into that when time permits because judging from all these slides, you have so much extra time. <laughs> Uh, we're secretary to all boards and committees. Uh, as you know, we attend and prepare the minutes for the board of trustees, your work sessions and regular meetings and your special meetings. Um, Elena in our office prepares the traffic commission agenda. And she also compiles and emails that to them for their monthly meetings. She keeps the traffic commission's files. Um, we prepare and mail disclosure forms for the ethics board. We're secretary to the ethics board as well with follow-up letters. We upload all board and commission minutes to our website, except for land use that's done by the planning department. We have been preparing all Zoom meetings for all board and committees, except for the land use they do theirs, and also sending out the Zoom invites for all boards and committees except land use. The whole new job. Yeah. And that's it for the clerk. Right, thank you. Uh, website, we work with public information officers to maintain the village's webpage. Register. <clears throat> the register of registry contains and sells records of birth certificate and death certificates that occur or that have occurred within the village of Mermarity. This is another thing that Elena works on and she does a great job at it. Uh, there are three stipends for the village registrar. Um, there's the registrar, deputy registrar, and the sub-registrar. The key functions is to maintain records of all death and birth within the village in accordance to state guidance. 
uh, we sell birth and death certificates. Uh, death certificates filed, we average 100 deaths per year in the village due to having Sarah Newman nursing home. Our records need management facilities. Uh, is located on 650 Holstead Avenue. We have a part-timer who runs that facility, uh, Victor Malinowski, does an excellent job in indexing all the things and locating and listing all of the files in the state archives uh, software program. And basically he follows the life cycle of the record in its useful life. Uh, we follow a document which used to be called the MU1. The new updated version, Sally, what is that? The NY100? LGS1. LGS1. And basically every record has a useful life. At the end of its useful life, it needs to be destroyed. Victor goes through those records as they come tagged. The software indicates which records have to be destroyed, and we destroy them. That is done annually. We aggregate all the files and we call for the shred mobile from Westchester County based on the availability. If they're not available, we, in past years, we've actually got a vendor to come in and uh, shred the, the documents. Uh, so the hard copy is shredded. Do we keep electronic copies of all that beyond that? If the hard copy is shredded and deleted, the digital copy is deleted as well. Sorry about that. The digital tech jumping forward. Records management continued. Uh, we have one part-time personnel who works 18 hours a week. The key, the key, the key file plan implementation, key functions. File plan implementation, a system to categorize your records. Each record has its own retention schedule. Uh, 1,600 boxes are on site. All have been indexed according to the New York State Archives criteria. Uh, record scheduling, indexing of all records for easy retrieval. Records are managed under NYL, NYS LGS 1 retention schedule. Uh, record retrieval, uh, structured query, full text search, or a combination of both. Uh, pulled building department records for tax and real estate searches. Retention disposition. This method by which records is removed from the system based on the New York State MU1 record retention system. Uh, this position is based on based on time. Uh, preservation of significant historical records. Uh, the clerk is in process of reporting all records on the website to LaserFiche. Uh, Bill department is scanning on all records to LaserFiche as well. Management information system. Cliff, would you walk us through this? Sure. Uh... The IT office or management of information systems office, uh, we maintain the village's local area networks, um, as well as our automated systems. We maintain our computer hardware and software, um, as well as our VOIP system, which is an Avaya IP office system. That's our uh, telephones. Um, we also act as the village's purchasing agent for all tech related equipment and services. Um, so, I mean, a uh, day-to-day -day rundown, like we provide everything from end user support to higher level, um, higher level projects relating to like configurations and project management and all that stuff relating to tech. Chris, could you give us an update of where we are on the implementation of Municity? Uh, currently we are, we are in one of the sub steps of what our vendor calls phase one, where we're still in the process of gathering um, information that the vendor is requesting. And once, once we have enough information as deemed by the vendor, then they are, they already have a copy of our database, but then they'll be able to pull and organize the data that they have and create a mock-up of what the system would be like and then we move on to phase two so in when do you think we would be fully operational on municipality five 
Uh, I don't have a projected date. I know that the goal is, um, I believe that the goal was, what was it, eight or nine months from, from this time we started, but we did have a couple of hiccups already, which pushed it back. But um, yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a hard date for that yet. Well, I, I'm not looking, I'm just looking for projections. So are, in, will we be fully operational within the next fiscal, in this upcoming fiscal year is my real question. If, if you mean by June, no, it would not be live by June. We might have a mock-up database that we could be testing on, but it wouldn't be a live database that we'd be using in production. Well, are you asking about June 30th, 2022 or June 30th, 2023? 23. Oh, 20, 23. We should, it would be operational within a year from now, basically, is my question. Within a year, yes, we should be. I thought you meant like within a few months, June 2022. Well, if, we're only in, if we haven't finished stage one, there's no way it's going to happen. By <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I would say that, yes, we should be within a year um, live. Okay, thank you. I want to run through some accomplishments uh, between the clerk treasurer's office, the clerk, the treasurer, and the IT office accomplishments. All board and trustee minutes uh, converted from microfiche to laser fiche. Uh, we retained a new online tax basement service for the efficiency and ease of use. Glass partitions were installed at the clerk treasurer's office to assure safety. Cross training staff for task redundancy and succession planning. Assisted building department with records needs for viewing and foil. Provided Vomni.net email addresses for all village volunteers and board committee members. IT moved building department staff to 123 Marinic Avenue and back to 169 Mount Pleasant. You know? And currently we're still moving the building department to different offices. Um, established beginning processes of implementation in City 5. Installed cameras in the building department with security over the register and the safe to ensure proper cash controls, uh, replaced all IT equipment damaged in Hurricane Ida. Those were our accomplishments for the last fiscal year. Our goals for next year. Uh, one of our biggest goals is to complete Municipality 5 project with all scanned files accessible through the website. Establish more efficient ways to access tax billings on the website. Establish electronic bill pay for use by accounts payable. Investigate ways to assure that online tax payments using online bank bill pay are accepted. Implement strong cash control procedures in the building department. Reconcile reconciliation of accruals to cash basis of court bank reconciliation, including control procedures and checkpoints to ensure processing is being followed. IT infrastructure refresh is needed in the building department Fire Department and DPW. Retire several servers when Municipality 5 and LaserFiche are entirely cloud-based. Those are our goals for next year. Questions? I think you guys and gals do a tremendous job for this village, really do. Thank you, Dan. Very helpful, very user-friendly, and numerous compliments from uh, the public and the residents. Thank you. We try. You you succeed. Thanks. Thank you, sir. All right. Especially in the past two years, when things change every day. Yeah. All right. Then next is the village manager, Jerry. Uh, we'll uh, Lou. We'll go with um, uh, public works first, and I'll go last. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. All I, right. I, I, uh, I skipped ahead. Keith, how are you? Hello. How are you? All right. Hey, James. Hi. Um, so a uh, little information, if anyone's not sure. Uh, our Department of Public Works is responsible for the overall operation and maintenance of village public works infrastructure. We have 96 lane miles a village owned roadway that doesn't include the state Boston Post Road or county owned uh, Harrison Avenue. 
that we are required to maintain during snow emergencies. <clears throat> we currently have 16 village buildings that we maintain, the entire village fleet of vehicles and 43 employees <clears throat> among seven different divisions. Our divisions are the administration division, sanitation division, highway division, sewer division, central garage, sign division, and facilities maintenance. Um, most of those are pretty self-explanatory. So if anybody has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer questions about the divisions. And if not, then we can work our way into the budget itself. <clears throat> questions? I wanna, Chief, I wanna start with um, 1490 and either Augie or Dan will put it up on the screen. But I need to point something out. Oh, yeah. I'm taking my headphones. Do you have any count, the count numbers on the left hand side? 1490. Yep. That's it right there. So, so as everyone knows, Tony's out um, sick, but his uh, full salary is in our budget. Uh, he continued to get paid uh, for six months, and then now he's on um, uh, a different um, type of, of uh, compensation. Um, and so, because of um, because of the loss of Tony, we've had to move people up into the management position, and we had. Um, Mark Ferraro, who was the longtime assistant um, general foreman, uh, he took uh, that position. Uh, and James, who is a heavy motor equipment operator, we only have a few of those, moved into the acting assistant general foreman. Mr. Ferraro will be retiring on Friday. And so I will be uh, promoting Chief Barney to the um, assistant general foreman position because Tony still holds the general foreman position. But at the same time, Chief Barney will become the acting general foreman. And um, our sign mechanic, our sign uh, um, technician, Pablo Ruiz will be the acting assistant general foreman uh, working alongside and with Chief Barney. But what I wanted to point out is that we have Tony's salary in there. Plus we also have, of course, both of those individuals, Chief Barney and Pablo, they're both union members. And so they have rights to out of title pay. And we've accounted for the out of title pay for our, um, our public work staff to move up into management positions. And I need to point out that um, we are doing uh, a lot of work. It is nonstop from me, the amount of emails and the amount of directives that I send out. Um, and they continue to, uh, they continue to astonish me and surprise me. They just keep going. And uh, maybe I'll let up at some point, but not right now. We still have a lot to do, but the uh, department is really running well uh, with Mark's assistant. But now that Mark's leaving uh, with James and with Pablo. So we're in very good hands. I mean, I only spent a little bit of time when Tony left um, with them. And uh, I spend a little bit more time now on emails and phone calls, but they have continued to impress me. And so I want to bring that out first thing um, in uh, James's budget. James, if you can go over in certain areas where we had increases, I don't remember and I doubt you remember, but I can tell you just to be quick that we had an increase of 20% that I asked Augie to put in across the board for our fuel so that we could accommodate for the, uh, the Russian price increase. And then there were some other areas that we talked about to increase. Um, and if you could uh, remember what they were and go over them, that would so, be helpful. Yeah. So our, our major increases um, besides fuel, which is, broken into every different department's budget individually. Um, in all of our supplies, materials and supplies, we're seeing, we're seeing almost at some places 16% increase. Um, for instance, um, in the sign department, just, just sign posts and sign blanks. Um, if we can order them, if it's not on back order, we're, we're paying almost one or two dollars more a sign blank than we were 
six months ago. Um, another, and that um, is reflected, let me see which page Tavo is here. <clears throat> I think we had salt. If you can, if you can, yeah, oh, salt, salt is, yeah. salt went from um, $50 a ton to $73 per ton. Right. Um, and that was um, unforeseeable. We, we are engaged in a salt contract through New York State. And um, it's very carefully planned that that contract expires in September every year. So we commit to a price now. And that price is going to change in September, and there's no way of knowing what that price is going to be. So, um, you know, every year we commit. In in the past, we were committing to I think 1,200 ton of salt a year um, as a as a minimum guaranteed amount, and we've always ordered more than that. Um, and they kind of have you both ways. So if you don't meet that minimum, you pay a penalty for them to store it until you can take it from them. And if you go over your minimum by a certain percentage, you pay a penalty price for going over what you guaranteed them you were going to buy. So um, they've, they've increased the cost uh, exponentially, obviously, but there's also, you know, always unforeseen costs with that because you're never going to only use exactly what you guaranteed them. It's, it's, it's impossible. You can't predict the weather. <clears throat> Uh, our equipment. So I should say before chief, before the chief continues, is that um, because of Ida, we had to, well, we've had to touch every piece of equipment that was uh, impacted by the flood, either uh, draining fluids or having more extensive repairs. Some of those repairs we tried to do in-house while we're keeping our fleet of uh, trash trucks going out every day, but a lot of those repairs we had to do uh, with contract services, um, including uh, including our newest vehicle, which was the, uh, or maybe not the newest, but our new uh, um, vacuum uh, truck. So we've been able to keep up with that um, significantly. We had also, um, we have an increase of about 20. So James, it's, it's, uh, it's our five, it's our 5110 budget where we have various repairs um, we've increased that from 41,000 to 49,295. Um, and that is uh, above and beyond the, um, the fuel increase. So that's 20% just for, so we're budgeting now, um, basically repair costs of about $50,000. Yeah, we're, so we, we planned that because as of this point, we've, we've serviced, like Jerry said, with the flood and the damage, we've serviced, um, we've changed the, the lower fluids, meaning the anything that has to do with the drive axles or motor oil or fuel filters. We've changed everything we have twice since the floods. And yep. we are still having vehicles with issues coming into the garage. Yep. Um, and there's, it's just, uh, again, an, an unforeseeable cost, but it's, it's guaranteed that things, as the, as the weather heats up and we start to really, you know, work our, the other half of our fleet, our non-winter fleet, we are going to see these, these issues um, coming up more and more. There's, just, there's no way around it. <clears throat> what I want to, what I want to say is, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Trustee Natchez. No, go ahead. So what Sorry. I wanted to say is we talked recently about river cleaning and, and, and channel cleaning. Um, Pablo, uh, Chief Barney and I and Dan um, have discussed going out there and uh, using the uh, $30,000 line or 32.5, whatever we have um, to get a, a jump start on that. Um, utilizing uh, later on a contractor, which I will ask the board to do a budget amendment um, for the uh, for the price range that I get for the contractor. But what we have not increased um, much here, we did put in the ten thousand dollars necessary for the river gauges that we're going to purchase for the annual maintenance, so that's taken care of. But we don't have a larger number in this budget for our, uh, our river and channel cleaning. Um, 
we've kept the catch basin cleaning the same because we have uh, uh, a process where we do our own catch basin cleaning now. We don't have to have an outside contractor. But that's something that we're going to have to talk about with the board. Um, if we're going to do more of that work, it's going to require um, more money. If we're going to do more annual work. So right now we're targeting five, five or six locations that have historically silted up and caused issues. We're going to attack those areas. Um, and that'll take probably, um, I don't know, four or five months to get done. Um, there'll be certain sections, as I said in the email, where we access the rivers from private property instead of getting agreements with homeowners or property owners. Um, so we will do what we can with what we have now, but that'll be a discussion later on. Um, I think probably we can probably hold off for next year uh, and add a large amount or the amount necessary, forget about the large amount, the amount necessary um, to, uh, to keep that work going. So that's something that we haven't done in this budget because we're gonna utilize the money that we have now that we haven't spent in the 2022 budget and then utilize an equal amount in the 2023 budget. So I just wanted to bring that up because that's been- yeah, Jerry, about. Jerry, I was, I was gonna ask you about that later, uh, but since you brought it up now, the, the so the, the line that you have in the, um, uh, in the uh, capital budget, um, that, that's different. Uh, that's, 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 different. That, that's for after the, the ACE program is up and running, am I correct? Right, that line is to demonstrate to the core that here we're making a commitment and this is what we anticipate spending in the future after the core project is done. But essentially it's probably the same work. It, it probably is, but I, I just don't know to the extent of, of what the maintenance program would be after the core is finished with their project. I see. All right. I just don't know. We know so, we know what so we see, we know what we see now. We know what we're looking at now. So discussion we have to have is that is 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 where the money comes from. Right. Where the money comes from. That's right. But as far as what we're doing now, public works is going out on an extra time basis and uh, handling some of the, uh, the, the areas. And then I will bring a, um, I'll bring an amount for the board to uh, discuss and approve for the dredging portion of it. Jerry, can you bring us up to date where we are on permits for that? Uh, we just, it would, Joe, Joe Tremelli just, just filed those permits. So, so we're supposed to touch base with uh, our contract the next week and then see where the, uh, I'll touch base with the engineers, see where the permits are for that as well. It, it looks like we did off? the same. Sorry. Huh? I'm sorry, go ahead, finish. It, it looks like we did the same work in uh, 2011 or 2012 last time. Okay. Are we just doing Mermernick and Sheldrake or are we also including uh, uh, Beaver Swamp Brook? We're, we're including the handwork in Beaver Swamp Brook, but we, I didn't have any plans that I could recycle and utilize for Beaver Swamp Brook. We just had Sheldrake Mermaranek plans. So we may have yeah. to um, take a look at and do an assessment on Beaver Swamp Brook before we put a, uh, a dredger in there. But there are trees yeah. and other obstacles in the brook that need to be addressed and our, our, our forces will do that. And, and Jerry, yeah. how, how, how high up uh, the Mermaranek does it go? Does it go uh, up to the dam? Oh, James will talk about that. James, because James is doing the assessment with, uh, with Pablo. All right. You want to know how far our handwork is going to go or how far the plan for... Uh, how, no, well, I mean, uh, I, uh, up that high, that's, that's more than handwork. That's, uh, that, that, that's going to need, need heavy equipment. <clears throat> so um, at, right now, the, the, the first focal points, um, they don't go past the throughway bridge uh, in the Grove Street mm -hmm. area. And that's, um, it's basically the, the bottom of Warren Avenue Park and it meets the throughway. Um, we, we have access on the other side uh -huh. um, to in the Warren Avenue Park area. So should the first phase that we've already marked out be cleaned up rather quickly, um, we can move into Warren Avenue Park and a few other areas. Uh, yeah. It's just the, the Warren Avenue Park situation is there 
there isn't it's not as much silt as it is um that that would be more deepening and and such whereas mm -hmm. right now we're trying to remove the materials that have been brought down the river and piled up in certain areas where it could be restricting flow if that makes any okay. sense to you and when you say brought down the river you mean just carried down the river <clears throat> yeah you you have I mean, uh it looks turbulent. like I mean, it does look like we throw that people do throw some stuff in the river but there's also yeah. stuff that flows downward it's it's a situation where you know the majority of the people that see the flooding when it happens you see you see rising standing water like it looks like a you know a third of mamaronic look like a lake um but until it got to that point and well after you 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 basically had class 5 rapids in the river areas before that that rising standing water event happened so that water is carrying rock and dirt and pretty much anything that isn't a very very large boulder or granite and it's carrying it to the next place that it turns and slows down the water the, the river yeah. and that's where it, it piles up so it's a, it's a, we have several points where you know at this point after the the event in in ida in september we have several points that have three or four feet of silt built up ju that just came down from that one storm. So priority would be is, is, is to move that first, remove that, get it out of the way. And then we can focus on the other areas that we think need to be deepened or widened or anything like that. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's worth saying it's, it's a 30 mile, 30 square mile watershed that comes into the village. Uh, I think it's about 24 of that uh, just as in the children in Mamaronic River. So um, we have logs, we have trees across the river too in certain areas that we haven't necessarily inspected or, or looked at. Um, so we'll be we'll be addressing and, and taking those out as well. Um, in the budget, you'll see a few things. If there's any questions, of course, we can answer them before our meeting on the 12th and, and James and I will talk about, you know, responses for that. But but the budget that James is handling now and, and uh, you know, he didn't necessarily volunteer for it, but he's it is uh, extensive and it um, it requires a lot of management. Um, James is very um, computer savvy. Of course, he knows this village kind of like the back of his hand um, growing up here and, and um, uh, being a part of this community. But what we're looking to do is we're just looking to continue to maintain what we have every day, but add a few things here and there. Um, and I think uh, I think things will, will go well. I just got his list, uh, which Mark uh, did a lot of work on, of the roads that we want to pave this year, which is a little bit more difficult because um, we want to make sure we're not paving roads that uh, that are going to get um, that are going to get cut up uh, when we do our sewer project. So because I'm handling both, uh, we'll make sure that we don't have that kind of situation. Um, and you know, it's it's the other guy's fault. If anything gets cut up, it'll be my fault. Other than I, that, if you have any other questions, I, I assume on that note, uh, Jerry, that uh, you're trying to get out of Con Ed what they plan to do and the water works yeah. to do. Yeah. So. So yeah, so so I, I think I've been told not to talk to Con Ed anymore because I'm a little rough. So I have James and Mark talking to Con Ed now, and they're brokering uh, uh, a time time frame because I don't have the patience for them. With their, um, they just they don't do things as quickly as I need them done. So, but we will have Library Lane. We'll have a section of Palmer. We'll have Mount Pleasant. Um, maybe there's another street I'm missing. Um, that'll get done. Um, that were kind of left over from last year. And then our roads are, are basically roads that um, didn't have an impact from utilities, but are uh, deteriorating, you know, quite a bit. Uh, in the overall uh, uh, budget, are there any additional increases in staff? There's movement of staff. So for instance, no, um, not yet. The, the, the increase of staff will come as a separate request when um, 
when we look at the uh, finalization of the um, uh, of the food scrap program and the potential changes that we want to um, we want to talk about in sanitation department, but the um, there's some movement of staff. For instance, uh, the department lost a uh, motor equipment operator to become the lead maintenance uh, mechanic. Um, so he's the foreman of the shop now, and he moved from. Uh, well, I don't know where was Sean James. You remember he was, what on, he was on highway. He was, he was on highway. highway. He was in highway. Now he's in the mechanic shop. So you'll see a decrease in highway of of like. 20% and an increase in um, uh, auto mechanic, uh, um, uh, our, uh, our auto shop, repair shop of about 14%. Um, but no, we're not adding staff in this budget. We're going to add staff when I talk to the board about doing something a little different with sanitation and with food scrap. And that'll be in it after the budget is approved. All right. All right. Anything else? Thumbs up. All right, Chief. Thank, thank, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. See you, Chief. See you tomorrow. Thanks. Okay. So, Dan from the PowerPoint, and uh, I wanted to make sure it wasn't as flashy or as jazzy as the clerk treasurer's. <laughs> And because we're all about business, we're not about the, you know, the glitz. So, um, Dan, go to the next slide. <laughs> okay, so this is our village manager, former government. The village operates under the council manager, uh, former government. Um, this structure, the elected board, sets the overall vision for the community. They set policy, adopt laws and resolutions. Uh, and then controlling uh, rises, raises in, in uh, 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 and appropriations of funds, while the manager is tasked with implementing policies and overseeing the operations. Um, we, um, we are focused, as you know, and I've repeated many, many hundreds of times, focused on operations all the time. And that's what we do day in and day out. Next slide, Daniel. So our responsibilities, we support the board of trustees, uh, we are an emergency management team where um, I have the privilege of being the coordinator. Um, we manage all departments in the village, um, as well as uh, interact with residents and business owners. Uh, we have budget oversight and uh, we follow the procurement policy. I do want to say something about the procurement policy. Um, early on, well, from my former uh, employer, we had a very strict, um, very strict purchase order policy. And when I got here, we had somewhat lax purchase order policy, but uh, I'm very proud of all the departments now uh, that they're focusing on uh, purchase orders. So we get to approve purchase orders and question the anticipated purchases before we actually get the voucher. When I first arrived in Mamaronek, that was not the case. So um, a lot of the budget changes or the management changes um, have to do with procurement, and so we're very um, we're very focused on the uh, purchase order and voucher system that we've created. I am the appointing authority. I work very close with the HR um, department and director. We um, negotiate contracts. In fact, uh, just recently, I sent you an email of how much money we are saving from the last negotiated contract, which started with the uh, CSEA union in June of, of 2020. Um, we're saving hundreds of thousands of dollars every year. And then of course, probably more than what we should, we manage large projects uh, and we work closely with, with our consultants. You know, we work very closely with our engineering consultant. Uh, Dan spearheads our grant administration. Uh, we work with uh, um, uh, planners if we need to. And of course, FEMA is a, is a big part, unfortunately, a big part of our, uh, our daily. And, and I don't exaggerate when I say daily. We work on FEMA stuff daily because it's so much and it's so time consuming. Next slide, please. So our accomplishments, obviously, we led the uh, community, mostly our, our staff, uh, through um, a very difficult COVID-19 pandemic trying to balance everything, including um, the um, health and welfare of our staff, uh, the care for their families, and um, 
just the overall concern of, of um, how we had to change things. Um, we are 100% responsible for preparing FEMA public assistance. Our, our, our current one is, is just astronomical. And like I said, we work on it at least two to three hours a day. Of course, um, we're very happy. I'm not sure if we take much of the credit, but we're very happy that uh, uh, our senator and lead guy in the country helped us secure 100% federal funding. Uh, it helps us with our capital budget. It also, it also moves us ahead to where we're, 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 we're not talking about when, we're talking about, you know, um, we're talking about how now. Um, and of course the grants and, and Dan should be commended because he works with our grant uh, consultant. Um, I know they meet every two weeks. They're very focused. And the reason we put together a small grant in committee of staff was because a grant consultant cannot do work without the staff providing all the deliverables that that consultant needs. And that's why I put Dan in charge of that because he can hound the staff and get everything that he needs. And that's the reason why we're successful. We're successful because we continue to deliver to the grant consultant who are the experts exactly what, uh, exactly what they're looking for and exactly what um, would make a successful grant application, uh, what, it, what it looks like. So we have, of course, the 5 million. Go back to a second. We have the 5 million in uh, sewer project, which is approximately 70% complete, probably a little bit more like 75 now. Um, we have the design uh, of the West Basin seawall, uh, our uh, resiliency infrastructure grant. Uh, and then we have CDBG funding uh, for phase two and phase three, um, which is, um, uh, is it is it 400 Dan? I thought it was a little bit more than 400. Maybe you're just rounding numbers. No, it was it was two separate grants of 200,000. Okay. Uh, that that was that was the max award the county was giving out. Okay. Uh, next slide please. So our projects obviously we're doing sanitary sewer. So our current sanitary sewer project is 75% complete. I have recently reviewed and submitted back to the engineers as well as the Save the Sound lawyers, the draft of our next, which is phase two project, which is gonna cost about $3 million. Mr. Sarnoff is very active in the replacement of the Hillside Avenue Bridge, um, which will open, I guess, uh, probably towards the end of this summer, Dan? Uh, hopefully the early summer, uh, maybe even okay. by the end of June. That's even more aggressive than I thought. So FEMA cost recovery, um, we, we, we have three applications right now. SIES is in the very, very final stages um, because Courtney and I work on that every day. Um, they're just looking at just a few things, very, very minor nitpicky stuff. Um, and we should have our, um, our reimbursement. We spent about 350,000 on that, on that um, uh, um, disaster out of fund balance. I think maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. And we should be receiving uh, back right around a million dollars from FEMA. Uh, our COVID-19, I don't have an update on that. Uh, I had to pass that off to Dan and a, uh, and a consultant um, to help us with that, to try to get everything. Dan, you have a quick brief summary? Yeah, I think uh, the first uh, request is somewhere around $480,000. And we're just finalizing that. that that's all costs up to... I believe August 31st of 2021. And there were uh, minimal costs after that, but we still have to work on that. And so when I say, I just wanna be clear, when I say that SIES, it, it, we, we spent 350 plus or minus thousand out of fund balance and we're getting back a million. The reason we're getting back more than what we spend out of fund balance is because we're allowed to take in our straight time take in our, uh, uh, our, our medical and fringe benefits. We're allowed to um, put in the equipment that we use during that time. So we're recovering not only the money from our fund balance, but we're recovering budget money from that year where we would have spent those resources, our equipment, our labor, and other items, we would have spent those in, in maintaining the village. We weren't able to uh, do that because we had to deal with the um, aftermath of SIEs. Same goes for, for Ida. You, 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 have not, you have not approved $19 million worth of uh, uh, fund balance because 
We don't have $19 million in the fund balance. You've approved three and a half or, or I think $3 million in the fund balance. But our, um, but our application is significant because uh, of all of the equipment, of all of the time, straight time, overtime, everything that went into it uh, is significant. Plus there's also future costs in there, like a $5 million uh, Tompkins Avenue bridge and potentially three to four or $5 million in uh, infrastructure um, that we still are looking to find time to, to investigate um, uh, storm sewers and, and, and the like to see how, uh, how damaged they are. Our pedestrian safety, that's a big deal for us. Um, we have, uh, of course, everyone knows about the Fenimore Road and Prospect Avenue. On that project, we decided to value engineer it. We're just putting out the heavy construction Parks Department is doing the landscape planting and soil work, and the Public Works Department is doing the, um, the striping and the signage for that project. So we took approximately a, um, an 80, 80 to $90,000 project, and we're probably in the range of, uh, with supplies and our own forces doing it, somewhere in the low 60s to do that project. We have Waverly Avenue in East Prospect. And we have, of course, the, the improvements uh, at Mamaronic Avenue School. Everyone knows we have more. We have the Oriental Walking Assessment, which is going to require some, uh, some in, uh, um, design and engineering, as well as a, a commitment of funds um, and a few other uh, areas. One area in particular is the, uh, is the Sally Roberts area on Old, Old White Plains uh, Road. I, uh, can I ask a question about the FEMA reimbursements? Sure. What about, I assume some of that's also paid by insurance. So how does that work? Yeah, so that comes off the top. So like we asked for 10 million, but we got 4 million in insurance, we'd be getting 6 million? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they, they won't, they, the, you know, they, they won't award us anything until they have all of the insurance recovery. And we've, we've pretty much recovered most of our insurance. We've recovered the full amounts for our buildings that were damaged and we've recovered um, whatever the insurance, whatever we can negotiate with the insurance on our vehicles. Mm -hmm. So we've recovered that money already. And that was, uh, that, that's already put back into the budget. So okay. the insurance part of our disaster is, uh, is complete. Now we are just dealing with FEMA all the time and every day. So whatever, the, but whatever we're putting in for FEMA, we're going to take insurance off the top of it. Yeah, they already have it. FEMA already has it, Nora. Okay. They already have our, our insurance recoveries because what we did with, with Ida is because it's such a large um, project is, is how FEMA refers to it. We started breaking down smaller projects. So I'll give you an example. We spent 110,000, 111,000 fixing streetlights because they were flooded. The box to control the streetlights were flooded. So FEMA broke that portion out and we're finished with that project and we'll be getting that check for 111,000 uh, minus uh, 10%, I think it is, right? Dan, we're still short 10%. Yeah, the uh, Fed's picking up 90. The state hasn't made any announcement about it. They're right. going to pick up so, that, so we'll get 100. That, yeah, we'll get 100. That wasn't an insurance like, item. That was not an item. No, no, that wasn't no, an insurance we, item. We, we don't we, 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 yeah, we, we don't have insurance yeah. for our, our uh, electronics on the traffic lights. Right. We don't have insurance. Yeah, or, or only building and contents. Building right. and content, yeah. And, and so, vehicles, of course. So basically... We might some of what we might get for staff time and the and costs related to staff time may cover some of the gap between where we didn't have insurance or where FEMA's picking up ninety percent and the state's not picking up the other ten. Okay. Easily, yeah, easily, yeah, because we're we're allowed to put in straight time, overtime, and we have uh, FEMA rates for our equipment. So let's say every piece of public works equipment went out there. We have a day rate or an, I'm sorry, an hour rate for each piece of equipment. And we have to calculate that and provide that to them. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it. Yeah, it's worth it because it's a, it's a, if they're giving it, we're taking it. That's how I put it. That's mm -hmm. great. Jerry, right. a quick, like, quick question. Yeah. Uh, I, I noticed in, in the capital budget, you've got a, uh, we have a line there for um, uh, Orient the sidewalks. Um, yeah, that, that's does, old, how does that, how does that dovetail with the, Safety, the, the pedestrian traffic safety improvement. That's what that is. It, the the Orient yeah. Sidewalks is a safety improvement project that we've created after a, um, that we want to, that we want to do after a walking assessment in Orient, okay. Rushmore and yeah. Old Coast Road. So that's what that's, yeah. that, 
that's the four hundred thousand dollars we're looking at there. Yeah, no, no, that's sidewalk. no, that's I, separate. That's you know, big the, number, the, right? the four hundred thousand is the numbers from a Maranek Avenue school. Uh, the sidewalks, which were contemplated as part of the Orienta uh, walking safety assessment, yeah. are still in preliminary design. And uh, I received cost estimates from uh, Matt Carmody from AKRF, and that's what's been included in the capital budget. All right, because I see uh, it says Orienta sidewalk, so it's $430,000 for yeah, 20, between uh, 23, 24. Yeah. Yeah, right. for design uh, one year and then uh, construction the next year. All right. Yep. All right. Next slide, Dan. I'm getting tired, so we got to keep moving. Okay, so this is my slide about Dan Sarnoff. Dan has a, a master's in public administration from SUNY Brockport. I, I don't even know where Brockport is. Um, he's got over 20 years experience <laughs> in the public sector. Uh, of course, he's a local, local uh, um, uh, born uh, Mount Kisco. And um, as I said many times, he handles large project for us. He handles the grants. Uh, he does all the work session agenda, which is a, a difficult job. And uh, he chairs our safety committee. Um, but we, uh, we're working with Dan on the first bridge of three bridges. Actually, the second bridge we won't do, but Dan is our point person. And then at some point, um, they will start the Otter Creek Bridge. Uh, because the town of Rye, remind me, Dan, how much did they get for that bridge? Obscene amount. It was 4.2 or 4.3 million. It was That's it insane. was over 4 million. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. So they scored on that one. Um, so that's Dan in a nutshell. Next slide. Courtney. Courtney is my right hand person. Uh, Courtney um, is uh, a Mamaronek, born and raised. Um, she... Uh, uh, she lives in in uh, in Harrison now, just over the border, and she's our point person for the FEMA reimbursement application. She works um, every every morning for a couple of hours on FEMA reimbursement, and sends many emails out to department heads, but also is calling our FEMA representatives, which are really nice people, um, almost almost daily. You know, three four times a week. Um, she provides the administrative and logistical support for me and for Dan. Um, recently, um, within the past four months, she has started to support human resources and she is the point person for the county civil service with all the paperwork. And um, she puts in all the invoices and purchase orders for, for, our, uh, for our office, which uh, we handle a lot of the, um, we don't handle legal, but we handle a lot of the consultants. And then of course uh, we handle a lot of the uh, um, catch-all items that the others, for instance, we used to support Kyle's department when she didn't have a budget for uh, fuel and when she didn't have a budget for auto repairs, we would support Kyle. Um, so we're the catch-all uh, kind of cleanup hitters for that. Next slide. Robert. Uh, Robert was, uh, grew up on Long Island like I, I, uh, like I did, moved to Bermaranek with his family. Um, he takes care of a lot of things. He assists us in, in all of uh, our communication projects. He manages the reverse 911. Of course, you know his voice. He does a lot of recordings. Um, creates the newsletter weekly, maintains the village uh, webpage with the, uh, with the CT staff and a lot of our social media accounts. Um, and prior to and during and after the remnants of Hurricane Ida brought, that brought significant flooding that devastated us, he drafted, edited, and published numerous communications and worked with the uh, uh, one thing that this slide doesn't have. He worked with the CRC um, to do the recordings in Spanish during that, that period of time, which were very, uh, very important. Um, and so he has done an excellent job. He's part-time and uh, he likes to be part-time. He walks to work most days and he takes care of his uh, wonderful um, little girl um, when he's not working with us in Village Hall. Last person, Neri. Neri attends college and legal studies. He's studying every Tuesday for his LSATs uh, and he trades Tuesday for Saturday. So he works Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday in our office. He takes care of all of our insurance claims, our vehicle registration, he tracks our employee attendance. He prepares um, uh, local laws. 
and he uh, um, translates uh, the, the smaller, quicker things for us in Spanish. He speaks Spanish, so he's a uh, front, he's a front uh, uh, vestibule person, um, and he works with recreation. In fact, I'm going to be losing him for two weeks in April and two weeks in May to, um, to recreation uh, because they need help with the uh, startup of the, uh, of the summer season. So he does quite a bit more than just what his, uh, uh, what his previous responsibilities were. Uh, so uh, when he gets into law school, I'll make sure I send an email congratulating him and everyone will know. Next. Okay, these are our ledgers. This is boring stuff. Go to the next one. Okay, Dan, you got this one. Sure. Uh, there are several uh, budget lines which uh, the manager's office uh, keeps track of, you know, helps budget. Uh, the first is A 1230, which is the overall budget. Uh, overall, there's a year to year increase, I uh, sorry, year to year decrease uh, in personnel. We relocate, we transferred our senior office assistant from our office to the building department. So uh, she's paid out of that now. Uh, and then a very, very small reduction, uh, or sorry, very small increase in our contractual line. Uh, one thing to know, the board did authorize mid-year salary adjustments for non-represented full-time personnel during this fiscal year for increases that were deferred uh, going into FY 2020-21, which was, we'll uh, call the COVID budget. Uh, the administrative office's budget, this is uh, where we pay for uh, the Vergata common charges. There's no increase this year, but something to put on uh, the board's uh, table for to think about going forward. Uh, I'm sorry, the, um, and that's an error where it says total on the FY21-22 adopted uh, and proposed, uh, but uh, the regatta has uh, capital needs they need to address. Uh, there will be special assessments that uh, are uh, you know, placed upon the units and the village uh, owns three units within the regatta complex. Uh, our unallocated insurance, uh, we are seeing, you know, some significant increases in some of these areas, uh, you know, some due to our flood insurance history, which we really have no control over. Uh, and then uh, our general liability insurance is going up 70,000. The primary umbrella is going up um, by uh, 48,000. I mentioned flood insurance is going 50,000. And our deductibles we paid is also going up by 10,000. So it represents a 23% increase. I think uh, last year was something like a 16 or 17% increase, but I can, I can confirm that. Uh, our workers' comp budget is actually staying static, mostly because we entered into a two year agreement uh, for <coughs> workers' compensation. Uh, and it's uh, based on the prior experience rating. The tentative budget incorporates what we believe to be the maximum exposure for the village. So that final number may be somewhat less, but uh, we'll we'll get a better idea of that uh, uh, come uh, you know June Juneish time frame. Yeah, and one second. Uh, so so we typically try to uh, we typically try to grab uh, two or three year agreements because as you can see, insurance will continue to go up year after year after year uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, but every time, any time, I should say, um, an insurance uh, broker <clears throat> or uh, agency wants to enter into a two-year agreement, we grab that because it keeps it stable, uh, which is really what we're looking for. Um, hopefully, you know, we're in the second of the, uh, the two-year agreement. We've actually done two two-year agreements back to back. So we're in the, I'm sorry, we're in the first year of the second two-year agreement, if that makes sense. So we still have one more year to benefit, uh, but then after that, um, we'll try to negotiate what we can. Um, and we do negotiate um, our uh, insurance, uh, our insurance premiums as best we can. But uh, this year happened to be a pretty bad year for us. Yeah. And just as a general comment about workers' compensation insurance, uh, it, it, the the market for who will insure municipalities is very limited. Uh, right. The uh, municipal jobs are inherently dangerous, um, and uh, you know what I what most people don't realize is the most dangerous municipal job is not what people would think is public safety related, like uh, uh, police or fire. It's actually sanitation. Uh, 
you know, people jumping on and off trucks, uh, you know, people riding on the side of trucks. It's uh, uh, subject to a lot of injuries. Uh, and just as a thank you, um, you know, we uh, we crafted a statement about uh, what uh, the uh, what it's what we've gone through this year. And say we've all chosen careers dedicated to public service. Uh, over the past year, we've experienced the emotional and physical damage of flooding caused by the remnants of Hurricane Ida. Uh, despite this terrible event, you know we are the manager's office and continue to be inspired by the examples of so many of our village employees, volunteers, and elected officials. Many whom put many of whom put service before self to ensure the public good. Uh, we had many village residents. Oh, sorry, many employees were village residents whose own properties were significantly damaged by uh, flooding from uh, Hurricane Ida. And in a lot of cases, they they were working for the village before they attended to their own uh, you know, uh, needs at their, at their private homes. Uh, we are truly fortunate and privileged to work in a village that is not just a collection of residents, but a community. Yep. And that's the truth. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. So yep. other, other than the increases in, in insurance, which we spoke about, you know, at the tentative uh, at the tentative announcement, and then now again at this PowerPoint, we did have a reduction in staff where I thought it was best to move one of our employees to the building department to give them assistance. Many of you know, uh, I've been there uh, two to three days a week trying to make changes. Uh, we're closing the building department uh, for six hours on, uh, on Monday, the 11th. Um, so that we can uh, retrain the staff. Uh, I'll be doing some of the introduction and customer service and others will be doing uh, expectations and how we're going to move forward. Uh, a little bit includes municity, but not yet. Uh, we're just gonna set expectations for municity. But if anybody has any questions about our budget, we can flip the pages if you want, um, but it pretty much is summarized in the, uh, in the PowerPoint. Anyone? All right. Well, so basically you're saying you've moved one person out and there's no additional increases in yeah. position. We moved one person out. We, we moved an office assistant, Dan. We moved them out and we put them uh, to help the building department handle um, the, uh, uh, um, the paperwork, the permits, and the uh, um, getting that office uh, organized as best as possible. In fact, we're shuffling different people around to be able to help us to do that, including Victor Milanowski, who has uh, who has agreed to stay uh, in the building department for a couple of months to try to help them organize the uh, a little bit of a mess up there. So you you have um, you have four four what I would say um, people near the counter as opposed to three. It, with the, with the additional person, is that, am I understanding that correctly? Three, three people at the counter. Matt Gansert, uh, he's an office assistant. He was moved to our um, 650 Halstead. He, he travels back and forth from 169 to 650 and moves files, files and, and pulls files for, uh, for requests and for the uh, people uh, who asking, you know, asking for files and paperwork. So I had to put a dedicated employee on the file work because uh, we had um, most of the time we had uh, uh, an inspector doing that and I've taken that away from an inspector. So now it's an office assistant who does that and goes back and forth to our records management facility. So there's three people, one part-timer, two full-timers up at the uh, building department office. Kathy, Karen, Rebecca. Rebecca's the part-timer. All right. I, I, had, a okay. I had a quick question on page 10, 15, 15, no, 10. Um, the tree inventory interns, are we giving up on that? No, I, I, I don't want to give up on it, but um, we only have we only got one intern from okay. the uh, high school, yeah. and um, she took a tour with me of the building department. 
-hmm. and she wants to work in the billing department starting May 2nd. Okay, so we have to wait till we find. We have, we have to wait, or uh, if I get an offer of interns, mm -hmm. I'll quickly convert them to, um, to tree in interns. Okay, it's just not in the budget, but it's not a lot of money either. No, it's it's not a lot of money. It, it, it typically, um, if we give them service credit hours and uh, uh, like a uh, an easier schedule where they don't have to be stuck in an office all day, they, they pretty much do what they need to do. Okay. Cool. We take interns as they come. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you for the marathon session. And I will see you uh, on what next Tuesday? Monday. 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 Monday's a Monday's Monday. a board meeting. Oh, oh yeah. I'll see you a month before the uh, next question. Yeah. Okay, great. Monday uh, and Tuesday. Yeah, Monday and Tuesday. Motion to close the meeting. So moved. All in favor? There you go. See you, folks. Thanks. Thank you. Take Good care. night. Bye bye. See you in a Bye. Couple of days. bye, -bye.